So, in the first episode of Raising Kanan, we're thrown into the world of young Kanan and his not-so-fun park brawl, courtesy of some older kids. Rock, who happens to be both his mom and a badass drug kingpin, is all about pushing him to hit back. Now, after 15 years in 1991, Rake wants Kanan to attend a prestigious school, but he prefers the family drug business. The episode also brings in some key players like Jukebox, Davina, and a bunch of others. Rack clashes with rival Unique, leading to a truce. Kanan, wanting to be like his mom, intentionally fails an exam and gets involved in a deadly confrontation, marking his entry into the drug world. Rack tries to make amends with Unique but realizes Kanan is now part of the business. After a drive-by, Rake introduces Keenan to the dangerous reality of their lifestyle. Detective Howard warns them of more threats. Rake hands Keenan a gun, marking his official entry into the drug business. Rake is fearful for Keenan's safety, but he's excited to be part of the family business. Rack, worried about retaliation, insists on driving Keenan to school. High school drama kicks off with a powerful fight. But, being the crew's funny guy, famous, cheers on Davina, and Kanan keeps his feelings on the low. Rake joins forces with her brothers, plotting to reclaim lost territory. Rake meets Unique, who suggests resolving the tension with another death. Detective Howard offers Unique a deal to protect Rake in exchange for peace. Marvin picks up Kanan from school for his first job. Jukebox has a side hustle and a secret relationship. Rake notices signs of domestic abuse at a store, Rake and Lulu negotiate terms for using the store as a front. Kanan and Marvin arrive at the stash house, where Kanan feels unimpressed. Rock questions Kanan about his day, and suspects D. Wiz's involvement in getting guns for Buck 20's debt. Rake decides to sacrifice D. Wiz to ease the tension, instructing Lulu to make a move during Marvin's party. Unaware of the plan, Kanan waits for D. Wiz. Lulu takes D. Wiz to Marvin's party, where he's set up for a hit. Marvin ends up in jail after a fight. Rake maintains her ruthless control, exchanging cash for information on Unique's drug re-up. She uses this intel to help detectives Howard and Burke make a bust, disrupting Unique's supply. Rack's coldest move involves taking Cannon to pay respects to Dee Wiz's grieving mother, despite knowing she ordered his killing to save Kanan. Unique faces challenges in his drug empire, resorting to drastic measures to maintain control including a violent encounter with a childhood friend. Meanwhile, Kanan remains uncomfortable with his mother dating Symphony Boskett. Rack, recognizing Kanan's slipping grades, enrolls him in night courses, unknowingly placing him in Symphony's class. Jukebox faces struggles in her music career, dealing with family tensions and resorting to theft to fund her dreams. Unique's crew robs their stash house, almost killing Kanan. Marvin insists on keeping it a secret. Rake discovers a bloody shirt in Keenan's room, unaware of the dangerous events he's entangled in. Rack confronts Kanan about the bloody shirt, leading to a clash between motherly concern and Kanan's loyalty to his uncle Marvin. Rack plans to outsmart Unique by moving her product off the corners and into buildings, avoiding police attention. The episode unfolds with plot twists, including Keenan's growing fondness for Symphony and a revelation about Detective Howard being Can's father. Kanan gets arrested, providing Detective Howard with an opportunity to collect his DNA and discover their familial connection. Rake faces challenges in her attempts to secure a new unit, resorting to violence to assert her authority. Meanwhile, Jukebox's character development continues. Rack faces challenges in public housing, using lethal force to protect her interests. Detective Howard learns Kanan is his son, but Rack's resistance hinders a life-saving procedure. Rake loses her drug connection with Dean, explores alternatives, and introduces Gabriel into her plans. The episode concludes with Scrapey beaten and battered, hinting at escalating conflicts. Kanan's reckless actions lead to Nicole's tragic death from a deadly batch of drugs. Jukebox world shatters as she loses her girlfriend. Rake discovers Kanan's involvement, raising questions about blame and consequences. Detective Howard's interest in Kanan deepens straining Rake's boundaries, while Lulu's failed hit on Unique escalates tensions between Rack and Unique. Jukebox copes with grief after Nicole's death. Detective Howard uncovers the lethal drug source and targets Rack and Keenan. Lulu takes control in the music venture, 
while Marvin faces Rock's anger for collaborating with Kanan. Rack deals with the threat from Gabriel and orchestrates a strategic move against her abusive partner. The episode ends with a cliffhanger as Lolu faces a potentially fatal attack from Unique's crew, leaving Marvin desperate to save his brother. Episode 9 intensifies the conflict between Unique and Rack, with Marvin seeking revenge, Rake plotting against Detective Howard, Symphony, and Rack's relationship crumbling, and Marvin's violent reaction to Jukebox sexuality. Detective Burke continues her pursuit of the lethal drug, while Rock manipulates Keenan into killing his father. In the season finale of Rack's world, things take unexpected turns. Rake manipulates her son, Keenan, to kill his biological father, Detective Howard, but Kanan fails. Rake's actions strain her relationship with Lu Lu, leading to threats and control over his recording studio. Rake's vengeance puts Marvin in danger, leading to his arrest and complicating Keenan's escape plan. Symphony helps Keenan leave Queens. Scrappy unexpectedly helps Keenan, marking a newfound respect. With Lu Lu, leaving the hospital, hears Famous's song on the radio, realizing there's more to life than the drug game. Detective Burke learns about Howard's condition and a potential threat, while Rack sets up Unique to frame him for Howard's murder. Marvin is also arrested, and Tony cooperates with the police against him. In a twist, Detective Howard survives, leaving questions about future alliances and conflicts.